Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are talking with three rock stars on one very specific topic, and that is how do you generate more listings this year than you've ever listed before in your life? Uh, to help me do that, ladies first, Lisa, quick introduction and goal for listings taken this year as the, as the one team leader rock star amongst the marketeers in the room. So Lisa Chinati, Boston, Massachusetts, and our goal is 500 listings taken and sold this year. Okay, so 500 listings taken and sold this year. And this is a product we've been working on since last August. So right. we're gonna, we'll, we'll delve into some of that. Yeah. Uh, Jason, you've been on the show many times. Yes. Anything you want to say about yourself before we jump into this? I think I'm very privileged to be in this group of people and I'm excited about the topic and I'll I leave it at that. I love it. Jimmy Mackin. Yes, sir. First time on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Jimmy, for, you know, the, the some of the people out there in my ecosystem that don't know who you are. Yeah. Give them a little backstory. Tell them the company you started. Sure. Just so they understand and then we'll jump into all this fun stuff. Yeah. So my name is Jimmy Mackin. I'm the CEO of Curator. Uh, is Jimmy Mackin one word? Je no, it's two words. It's hyphenated. That was it's really hyphenated. good. It's hyphenated. Yes. It's hyphenated. Jimmy hyphen Mackin. Yes, Jimmy Mackin. Yes. Jim Curator. Mackin. Yeah, Curator, CEO. So uh, we work with about 540 of the top teams in the country. Yeah. They sell about $30 billion a year in real estate. And so what we try to do at Curator is just distill down those ideas mm -hmm. and actually execute them for clients to help them get results. And yes. as you and I both know, yep. you and I have been obsessed with this idea about how do we help take these ideas and bring them to market to actually get more listings. Right. Yeah. You know, what are the best strategies, the best tactics, the best right. ideas? Ideas to get more listings. Right. So we've been a listing centric company for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now we're like a listing obsessed company at this point. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that. I like me that too. Word. I think you are as well. Yes. It's you can give me a little focus. you can give me a little fist bump there. I was gonna say, where's the cash? <laughs> we'll explain that later. Okay. So so let's just talk about what's hot and what's not right now in listing attraction, right? So coach's perspective. Yep. yep. You know, marketing, you know, marketing machine perspective, yep. you know, in the trenches every single day, uh, you know, one of the true great operators and, and sort of data driven listing attraction and all things marketing attraction. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lisa, er everything goes here. What is working right now from a listing attraction standpoint? So. Google pay-per-click advertising is probably one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. um, expireds are huge right mm -hmm. now. Yep. Um, farming is coming into play. And mm -hmm. then honestly, we're doing a lot of work in our database, which is having huge results. So the old leads that we generated 2017 and 2018 are where we're seeing the biggest turnover. So what's interesting is when you talk to most people, that, that order is going to be reversed. Mm -hmm. And I think we're both on the same page. And I want you to unpack the first one because the the, the thing that I want you to be considering as you're listening or watching this is the obvious choices, of course, your past clients and sphere, right? A, a natural, easier way for the vast majority of people to go out and attract listings. What we are in discussion of is, is what is the largest addressable market and how can I serve that market? So in marketing, we call it the TAM, the total addressable market. So we believe that if you look at what Zillow does and Redfin does and every other major company trying to attract opportunities, yeah. they're all using Google. We decided we should be doing the same thing. So unpack, Lisa, give us, give us like the person that has no idea what you're talking about. Step one, two, three, four, and the findings. Totally. So. We're starting with a landing page that is just, it's so it's not branded real estate. Mm -hmm. It is totally branded to just find out what the value of your home is. So actually no branding at all, right? The whole purpose is type in your address, we'll tell you instantaneously an online valuation. Mm -hmm. That lead comes in, gets sent into our database. Okay, so back up. What are some of the headlines? And let's all play on this. Because yeah. the first thing somebody's gonna say is, okay, so if I'm gonna run a Google ad, what is the offer? What is the question? What should I be asking that's going to cause them to click on this versus something else? Yep. So, right. so all of yeah. us, what, what have we found? That well, just one, right one quick pro tip on this. You know, we had an opportunity to interview a guy named Larry Kim, who mm -hmm. is the founder of WordStream. Yes. And okay. yeah, just a super weird dude, but also yeah. incredibly intelligent. Yes. And one of the things he taught us in that interview, he said, you know, most people, when they run any type of Google ad, they'll try to match the keyword, right? Mm -hmm. So the mat, the keyword will match. And the idea is, is that if someone searches for, let's say, sell my house, you want to have sell my house in the headline. Mm -hmm. The reality is those everyone else does the exact same thing. Bingo. So what he goes for is he calls it the unicorn cat. 
tap tactic, mm -hmm. which is like something entirely different. So even though the keyword mm -hmm. may or may not mm -hmm. match, mm -hmm. something just out, outrageously different than what every other ad's running. So what I would encourage people to do, especially when it comes to Google Ads, is like using some of the current conversations, the relevant data that's happening mm -hmm. right now in the ad copy. So as an example, yes. if someone's saying, hey, I want to sell my house, you might say, like right now, you might say something along the lines of, you know, last week, 135 people in Stoughton, Massachusetts decided to sell their house. Learn more here as an example. Yeah. That's something that just stands out amongst the sea of sell my house for this or get his estimate here. So it's interesting you say that. My buddy yeah. Dan Williams, who I need to introduce you to, you've met Dan before you've met Dan. He, he before he became the chief revenue officer with Three Day Blinds, he was working basically at an ad agency mm -hmm. doing all their digital, including for a little company called Zillow as yeah. a startup, which was fantastic. But he said, I look for not the unicorn, but the pink tie. And I said, what's mm -hmm. the pink tie? And he said, the pink tie is if all the keywords, let's just say there's 10,000 people searching for this one and there's 7,000 searching for this one and there's 3,000 mm -hmm. searching for this one and there's 1,200 searching for this one and there's 800 searching for this one. He goes, I want the one that they're at 800. He goes, I'm going to do all of them, yeah. but I'm going to do the smallest possible one. So when he was running this men's retail store, yeah. he, people would type in, need a pink tie, and then end up buying, you know, three thousand dollars for the clothes because yeah. the first thing they need was a pink tie, right? Right. So, yeah. so, so there's specificity the equals intent, exactly. And that's and that's what he's tapping into. Yep. The more specific you can get, the higher likelihood that person's going to be interested in what you're offering. Yeah. So, so I was, think. Go ahead. So, I was gonna, so I think in this case, you got to do two different campaigns or two different ad groups if we're going to be technical about Google. Mm -hmm. One of them is the keywords she's going after, which is your your bread and butter keywords. Mm -hmm. What's my home worth? Home valuation. Uh, home calculator has been really, or anything using the word calculator has been an interesting yeah, yeah. keyword to add to it. Unpack that. People look at mortgage calculators and they look at things along those mm -hmm. lines. So in the same vein of it, a home value calculator, that term has been pretty interesting. And some of the clients I have who are running these campaigns. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But so far, but Jimmy I, gets the big cookie. Jimmy's got the cookie. All right. Fine. At least I'm on the board. I'm <laughs> on counts. the board. Uh, I think what you're saying is interesting about uh, Larry's insight yeah. as well. I would make it a second ad group, but... I think almost a step removed and even more of the question of the problem of research. They may not go searching for what's my home worth. Mm -hmm. They may search things like, has the market gone down? Mm -hmm. Have I lost value in my home? Yep. Or sort of set a yep. step removed kind oh, of problem the, set. Yeah, the opposite, the keywords. problem. I yeah. love that. One of yeah. our big ones is equity. Mm -hmm. The word yeah. equity is having big draw for us right now. Yeah. Um, uh, just kind of. <laughs> what do you think the intent is that's, when they that's start that right word? there? That's a point. <laughs> I think it's actually a really useful point uh, yeah. here. What do you, just, ha have you, yeah, do you have any sort of downstream conversation uh, insight around why equity? Uh, I'm going to guess it's again, the messaging in the market is that values are decreasing. Yes. And when a consumer hears that the value is decreasing, that's not as impactful as how much do I actually yeah. have left? Yeah. Yes. May I also ask who is, do you have a specific like demographic or are there particular like, people, are there boomers? Who's actually coming to the plate and filling out the forms? Is there a one that's more known than the other? So boomers, we're doing some keywords that tie into boomers more specifically. So we're getting yeah. more of those, but we've got probably four different campaigns going to your point, all kind of hitting across different areas so that we're, pulling in as much as we can because what we're finding you know is that it's not just those boomers we're actually getting appointments mm -hmm. and signing listings yeah. from people that we wouldn't necessarily think of we're mm -hmm. finding condos are being are kind of hitting that pain point more so than that first time buyer that bought a single family sure. so first time buyers who bought condos mm -hmm. definitely willing to make the move up into a single family yeah. nice. more so than the single family to the bigger single family which that's a great insight for one of the postcards you sent me five reasons why people are selling condos in mm -hmm. this building number yeah. four will shock you mm -hmm. right did you see yeah. that postcard i did not oh it was, no. like, it was delicious yeah okay well it just i think i get just for saying did. delicious <laughs> on my own podcast yes, i think that's warranted <laughs> yes well building on that the idea of advertising staying on the track of advertising for a second one of the things one of the themes that i'm really bullish on and this is something that i think very few people are talking about and this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable for the audience is watching on the replay but there's a website called foreplay.co so just I make sure that's worth it f o f o r e play.co not I, dot com, not door. dot com, just to be clear, <laughs> dot co. Yeah. And what what that uh, website does is an aggregate of all the best agency ad agencies in the world who are saving TikTok ads, saving Facebook ads, saving Instagram ads, and you huh. can sort of it sort of stack ranks them. Mm. So as a marketer like we are. 
what you're looking for is you're trying to find inspiration outside yes. of the real estate industry. But most importantly, and this is the key point here, is if you're in the business of advertising and marketing and you have to get not just a click or an impression or a view, but a sale, Mm -hmm. Your ads are fundamentally going to be different than mm -hmm. the competition. Yep. So building on your idea of using Google, using search, when we get into the world of display, right, advertising, yeah. yep. there's just this sort of open window for us, a sort of white space in the market where if we start running these types of ads, taking the same kind of concepts that are working so well for you in Google and apply them with some video direct response ads, like there's magic there and someone's going to crack that code this year. Yes. That's a good one. Could be our little 1200 listing mastermind. So take yeah. us back to, uh, so you started this by saying, I'm running ads and they're filling right. out a form of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then they're automatically getting evaluation. 50% of the time they do, 50% okay. of the time they don't. So Based it depends on, on how far down the process they go and how much info they okay. give. Okay. Um, so it, it probably is really a 50-50 split. So like help me understand. So I don't know what you mean. So what, what information <coughs> unlocks price? What information doesn't unlock price? Like help me so understand. So address starts and it it's kind of tiered capture. So yeah. address, email address, phone number valuation given, mm -hmm. right? So we're finding that it's probably about 50% of the leads come in with address, phone number, or sorry, address, email, 50% yep. are coming through completely full address, email, okay. so partial phone, phone number, right? Yeah. And partial do, you leads. Have, do you have a, like if they stop, is, is there a, is there an unlock your valuation headline somewhere? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, or like, like, you know, on the landing page, for instance. Required, not required, yeah. requi like required cell phone. Do I really need their email? Mm -hmm. I really want their cell phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be interesting. You know, so just, I would just, it'd be interesting just to test because you can go from 50 to, it, it, let's just say you're getting 100 of these a week. If I can get you mm -hmm. know 200 a right. week based upon the formula, which you're going to share in a minute. Right, right. You know, again, it's, it's geometric growth, but it's yep. also stacking layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of future potential sellers mm -hmm. into your database. And that's the real game, which we're gonna get to. Right. Yeah, I guess the the upside is that as long as they enter an address, it enters the database. Got and it. we can mm -hmm. leverage yep. VAs yep. to go back and find Fine. the phone numbers yeah. and the email addresses associated with yep. those addresses. So we're still catching, I do like your point that we might be able to do just a little a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to unlock, you know, yeah. And I, just out of curiosity, oh, when you, I thank you capture the address, what do you typically <clears throat> do with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we get just the address, it dumps into a different bucket in our CRM, and that bucket is worked by our VA team in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And they're going back, finding the phone number, finding any information that we can. Yeah. Often it's a list of four or five phone numbers. Yeah. yeah. They're entering those phone numbers into the CRM and then moving it into a different bucket that mm -hmm. then goes to the inside sales team to try all those different numbers. If they're successful, the inside sales team keeps it, puts it into a nurture cadence. Mm -hmm. If not, the VA team or the ISA team sends it back to the VA team to mm -hmm. see if we can find some different paths. If VA team can't come, come up with anything else, yeah. then we take it and we move it to the agent pond so that the agents can door knock it, direct mail it, yep. and do some extra work with it from that perspective. You're a logistics company. Very really? much, very, I said, most data-driven yeah. operator you're gonna, so, so let me ask you a question. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it to Lisa, but then I want you to help with yep. this, the three things. So yesterday we we're interviewing mm -hmm. Phil Jones and we we're talking about, you know, video at the highest level to bring people into the funnel and then throughout the process. And one of the things we talked about yesterday was, so what do you do with the person that unsubscribes? Or what do you do with the person that gives you partial information? We talked about, you know, sending them, uh, you know, like a, a personal video or that would be the most, you know, like, hey, Jimmy, thank you so much. I'm Tom Ferry, Banana Real Estate. Mm -hmm. You know, you took the time to fill out your address. And I just, I just wanted to acknowledge people that do that generally are like one of three people. And I'm just curious, you know, which one are you? And there's, there's no right or wrong. One is, you know, you're just kind of playing around the internet and you thought, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to find out the value of my house. And, and that's totally fine. Or number mm -hmm. two, you were like, well, you know, like I'm kind of just playing around the market. I'm interested. I want to know what's happening in the neighborhood. And then number three is there's a legitimate chance that you're gonna put your home on the market in the next 12, 18, 24 months. Yeah. And, and each one of those is gonna present a different valuation in terms of what it is you most want. So would you just take a minute and just text me? Is it A, mm -hmm. you're just playing around? B, it's this? C, you're thinking about that? Just text me at 949-555-1212. Mm -hmm. Just let me know which one it is so we make sure that we give you exactly what you need. Yeah. Video sent. That's genius. I, I'm, we're not doing that. Um, 
We are. Oh, fuck. Lisa Chinati just told me I'm a genius. I have entered the cookie category. If you are only watching this audio, you need to race over yeah. to YouTube. I don't think this should be published for free. That's how good this is already. Okay, so let's go back into your funnel. So they, they fill out a form, you scrub it through the Philippines group. Then it gets turned over, I'm assuming, to the ISA department. That was if it was partial, right? Okay. If yeah. it comes in with the phone number, it automatically goes to ISA team. How fast? Seconds. Uh, so it hits immediately to the inside sales team. Mm -hmm. The If it's seven days a week between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m., they're called within five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and we're dumping them. One of the things that we decided to do in this case that's a little bit different than what we do on the buyer side is that all of these are going into a, a one account within the CRM that are worked by all of the listing ISAs. So right now there's two and a half that focus on listings. It's got a generic name so that everybody calls as Sam, right? Mm -hmm. Male or female, Perfect. doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so that the speed to lead is there. And so that as we're working through on the touches and the cadence and knowing that these could take two years. For sure. And mm -hmm. the turnover in inside sales is... Shorter Everyone's than Sam. two years. Every, everyone's named Sam. <laughs> Everyone is named Sam in perpetuity. So they get called right away, mm -hmm. right? We did find it. This was- What's we, the what's the script before you tell me the findings? Ring, uh, ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Tom, this is Lisa at- No, you're Sam. <laughs> <laughs> <I am saying. laughs> ring, ring, ring. Hello? So we actually- I know. They're that's... not using the name of the company because yeah. the consumer landing page doesn't- Doesn't have a branded, branded. real exactly. estate. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they're just that's saying- That's why I want people to hear this. That I don't want them calling and saying, hey, is that another ABC Realty, your favorite mm -hmm. real estate agent? Who are you? Mm -hmm. Why are you calling? Right. And Did Zillow send my name to say, you know, like that's what, that's what goes through. Yeah. Right. So, so help us understand. Well, and so there's a couple different paths, right? Mm -hmm. And the script depends on whether the full valuation was given, whether mm -hmm. no valuation was given sure. and whether we only had partial contact information because the consumer expectation mm -hmm. is going to be different on all three of those mm -hmm. categories. Mm -hmm. So if the valuation was given, Sam is calling and asking, what they thought about the valuation. Mm -hmm. Did they have a chance to fully review it? Love Did it, it make sense? Yeah, right? right. Do you have any questions about that? And that's where it goes from right. there. It, it's it, Maybe it's instinctive or maybe it's planned, Lisa, but this is a really important point for the audience, which is the goal of the first conversation is to earn the right for a second conversation. 100%. 100%. And people just treat it as if I got one shot with this person, so I'm gonna jam it down their throat in hopes of converting them to a customer, which is, it creates the exact opposite outcome you're looking yep. to achieve. So you're saying this is not a Tinder lead? <laughs> this is more like it's just lunch. <laughs> it's not even lunch, it's coffee. Right. Like, exactly. I'm just trying to give a contrasting experience. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so the first call for that one, the value was given, was really just to kind of start to introduce ourselves and ask right. questions. Mm -hmm. Right. If there are no questions or, or they say, I'm not interested or whatever, our job is just to keep going. And the inside sales team is, is, scripted to get through four no's before yeah. they kind of really take it. And that's super yeah. important. Oh, uh, why mean, is that important? Why, well, like, why, why can't I just say, no, I'm not interested in this time? Well, the analogy of going, you gave it the other day, going in suit shopping, mm -hmm. right? We know that they wanted to know their value for a reason. right? Mm -hmm. And it's until you get that no like that mm -hmm. you, you're going to get the true, open, honest yes. answer about it. And yeah. so our job is to prove that we're not just going to ask about the yeah. appointment, about the sale or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the reminder that everybody's in it for themselves and nobody wants to be closed. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody yeah. wants to be closed. Every, like, you know, just help me. Like, hi, hey, uh, can I help you? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. And then you walk over and pick up a suit mm -hmm. and try it on. Mm -hmm. You're not looking. Yeah. But like most most people take the not looking and then they yeah. push them away. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we know in this game is mm -hmm. it's going to be 99% of the listings <laughs> that get converted are happening in month five, yeah. seven, nine. Mm -hmm. But if you have 2,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 of them built up mm -hmm. over time at such a low cost, which we have to talk about. Right. Playing the long game with yeah. one source, this is cookie worthy. Oh, okay. finally. I know. You, you probably, I would, I, I would give you a second one, but yeah. Jason, you know, might be offended. So, so. Uh, that's mine. Okay, we went, we went add, we went form fill out, mm -hmm. we went option one, two, three. I threw in a video. Right, obviously reminded to, hey, these people aren't looking to be closed. Yeah. You were trying to earn the second conversation. Right. Different variations of where we should be running that or not where we should be running that, but how we should be running it based upon where are they, 
you know, the pink tie, the unicorn, right, different right. following yep. conversations. Give us the numbers right now. What were your early findings? Because you really started this in October. Mm -hmm. We're sitting we there in early February as this is being filmed. Yep. Give us some early data. Um, so what we've been finding, the month of January alone was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So January, our cost per lead was running at just under $5 per lead. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. that of the the numbers that come to mind are the ones that we had texted about a right. couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Is that a full lead or a partial lead or both? Those are partial. No, sorry, that's the full. Okay. It mm -hmm. goes down to sub $4 if we put in all the partials yeah. and include it. Um, so in that period, the first, I think it was three weeks of January when we looked at it, we had 238 full leads, didn't count any of the partials, and we booked four appointments off of those. Mm -hmm. Out of those four appointments, one went to a listing right away, mm -hmm. One went to a comeback. Two were sitting in the, it's probably more like six to 12 months out, but mm -hmm. it started the relationship, right, which right. is the biggest part. Like, mm -hmm. so I look at those yep. as we'll get one of those. So mm -hmm. somebody figure out really fast, what's 238 times five? Anybody? That would be 1,000 <laughs> times five times 38, right? Yeah. Thousand one five. He's gonna like beat that. you. It's like yeah, eleven hundred and eighty five or something like this that. This is great. Okay, so, <laughs> right, so just really fast. Okay, now now that's for once, for once I'm actually <laughs> mad at that. Okay, here we go. So it's five dollars. Like that newfangled. It's obviously eleven hundred ninety. Yeah. Two thirty eight. It's obviously one. It's eleven hundred ninety. Yeah. So, so, so here's five, here's my yeah. question for Do the listener. For <laughs> would you would you spend eleven hundred ninety dollars to generate a listing? All day. The answer is like you know we're talking CAC here. Yeah. Right. Cost but, to acquire a client. But, but cost to acquire a client. CAC. Yeah, don't miss that point though. You're Ooh. you're paying eleven hundred dollars to acquire the first listing. The first listing right. with I how many more in the well, pipeline? But I think we need to unpack though, there's there's the other costs because like the yeah. acquisition marketing cost sure. was two thirty eight mm -hmm. plus the cost of the ISAs. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus the cost of whoever setting up the ads. Yeah. So so let's just say the cost was Five thousand mm -hmm. bucks for the one, right? Like a fully baked, right? Sure. Maybe not even including yeah. your GNA. Fully baked, all in marketing services cost five thousand bucks to get a listing. Two hundred thirty eight from one. You've been on two appointments. You got two more coming in, and that's the first four mm -hmm. right. out of two hundred thirty eight. Before you bring in two hundred thirty eight the next month. Mm -hmm. Before you bring in four hundred the next month, because now we're getting into the spring market. Yeah. Yeah. Before you get five hundred the next month. Sure. Does everybody get the compound effect here? And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. so how? How much manpower, that's a funny way to describe it, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, how many How many SAMs are required in order to future pace this out, manage effectively, nurture effectively, build relationships effectively with what could end up being 10,000 hand raisers by the end of the year? Have you yeah. thought through that? We're starting to kind of bake it out. And it, I think it's, as we look at how many are actually going to keep resulting in conversations and where the nurture stays, right now we have two and a half SAMs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that I'm probably going to end up around seven SAMs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's my gut. Yeah. It could be t closer to 10. Yeah. How's, um, how's your ad spend going? Is Google absorbing your budget or are you throwing money at it that they just can't, there's not enough search volume? There's not enough search volume. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been part of going down to the pink tie or what was the word you used for it? Well, the unicorn. Yeah, you wanted the unicorn. unicorn. Yes. Yeah. And so part of what we're trying to do to, to generate more opportunities to get, because I know if we can get them, there's always going to be mm -hmm. somebody in there that's yes. going to sell, right? right? And we- right are doing the right things once we get them in to find them. So if yeah. I can just keep finding them, I'm mm -hmm. golden. Um, so part of the process of the unicorns and the pink ties mm -hmm. is to spend the, the rest of the budget. Right now, in the, the ad spend that we've allocated, we're not even hitting 30% of what I would spend. Right. Because right. it's just not there. It's, yeah. yeah. Right. DJ and Lindsay have the same exact problem. They're like, we can't spend enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Listen, when you're saying things like, I can't spend enough, that means there's profit behind this. Well, but yeah. I, I think you're, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But your thinking is right because yeah. you're going after, I would presume more the general types of keywords in terms of intent that are really indicative of a home valuation or mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. Right. Jimmy's point's super valid. And I think you're already moving there too, because there's gotta be search volume in your marketplace that you're not getting. That's mm -hmm. the, that's it's where finding the pink it. tie. That's yeah. where it really all comes the, in. They're like, you know, uh, how do I improve my home's value? You yes. know, yeah. how do I update my backyard? Mm -hmm. You know, five easy ways to, you know, like you, you, I think it's all that stuff. It's, it's what does somebody do 
before they start saying, what's my home worth? They, mm -hmm. they may have done it out here. Sure. And then they're like, okay, well, but if I do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and if you can capture them in this area, that may be the more things that, that Loan, De Loan Depot, Home Depot, sure. or you know, the, those companies are now spending money trying to get them in to say, come buy your wood from us and your wood right. blinds and your shutters mm -hmm. or whatever else. We're trying a slightly different kind of build out with that, with building out uh, like uh, ebook content. Yeah. And instead yeah, of going to the home valuation landing page, mm -hmm. how you do you relocate? I'm going there well, too. I, I've got some, I got something for the group here because this is actually a fantastic point, which is when you can't spend enough money at the bottom of the funnel and you have mm -hmm. to move up the funnel, mm -hmm. you have to start using content, you have to start using, using videos, right. yep. and you have to get in the mind of the consumer. What, what's the seller looking for at this particular stage in the process? Most sellers, more than 60% of sellers are actually going to sell and then buy their next house. Yep. So a lot of sellers masquerade as buyers yes and so this is one of the things that i think agents right now can embrace which is one of the most popular articles we produced in the last 12 months was a 3.28 million dollar sale in raleigh north carolina we spent a hundred dollars on the ad it got over seven thousand visits to the website so by creating content about let's say recent sales notable sales homes i've never sold before homes that have broken first record. time in the market in 22 years you mm -hmm. know yep. something remarkable something yep. unique right something special about that by creating that now all of a sudden you can start to pull that audience in you can start to build that audience and you need right. that if you're going to retarget them with direct response ads or using some of these google campaigns. can we can we just give them some examples like it's the it's the only property on the street yeah sure. it's the first like things that things that make it remarkable like it's not it's a three bedroom two bath you know colonial well, it in was, georgia it, it, right? was it's like, it has to be something special yeah it would surprise you because actually mm -hmm. i had i have this uh at, at elite yesterday david mm -hmm. and i had a great opportunity to talk about the most viral content that we've seen in the last 12 months don't share that on this podcast okay well it's going to be <laughs> okay it's going to be extend for, the time yeah make sure there's memories inside well, those clips well the thing that would jumped out to us tom was it is, people are looking, talking about specificity, people are looking for things like four bedroom, three bath, mm -hmm. under $300,000. Yep. And if, if you're advertising things like that, all of a sudden the clicks that would normally be happening on Google, you're now capturing them before they ever happen. Yep. And so one of the things that we look for when we talk about unique and special is we you gotta get in the mind of the consumer. You've Like I saw earlier, Lance Lambert tweeted mm -hmm. about rates hit 5.99%. Right. First times we saw this since what, I guess, September, September, yeah. September 12th. Yeah. Who, who's watching this podcast right now hasn't sent that email? email out, right? Hasn't created a video or article about I, that. I shot a green screen on it yesterday. I just haven't hit publish yet. Yeah. Sorry, Courtney. And this, but this let is, you clean it up. But this, but this speed, right? Yes. Speed yes. is, is how you win in this space. Yep. And so when I think about content creation, when I think about getting, like you have to get it, you have to be tapped into like, I'll tell everyone who's watching today, Tom, very secret. Cause I figured it out. Okay. Uh -oh. Courtney, this, write this down. This, this, this you might be about to steal this, your cookie. This is, this <laughs> is the secret to wait, why. Wait, 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 wait. Well, this is the secret. It's, it's not. It's not nice. quite all the way over. Yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is the secret to why Tom Ferry is Tom Ferry. Okay. I, I mean, before you. Get I'm there, super curious. Before, before you get there, are we allowed to steal from each other? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So, the, and I and I I I I've observed this working with Tom now for many years and knowing Tom for a long time. Tom's superpower is his inputs. It is the thing that he actually consumes that makes his output so special. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the articles he reads, whether it's the people that he gets a chance to surround himself, whether it's a Twitter feed that he has, whether it's Instagram that he's, mm -hmm. you know, the best accounts he follows, he is fanatical about consuming the right information. Mm -hmm. And he's able to process that information and he's able to digest it in a way that's clear and easy for the rest of us to understand. You can take that if you are a marketer, if you're an advertiser, if you're an entrepreneur, you've, if you want to improve your outputs, you got to fix your inputs first. And too many agents right now are watching what other agents are doing and they're not punching and above their weight class. So I have the word double down on that. You're, okay, so, so here's, the, I got, can yeah, I double down on the yeah, word? Yeah. Cause I want that cookie. <laughs> I'm curious. It, the word is he's a master synthesizer. Mm -hmm. He has the ability yeah, to take information choice. from all over the yeah. place, yeah. the right yeah. inputs, synthesize I'm slightly it into right something. Now I'm thinking about leaving the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is actually about you guys right now, but thanks. No, no yeah. but there's a tr what you're saying is true because yeah. all the stuff we're talking like I'm about, giving my the home yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. worthy. Doing eBooks or PDF downloads sure. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You're right that a huge fraction of sellers or, or buyers and they're yeah. looking for it. But just getting that lead is only a starting point. Mm -hmm. And there's an economies mm -hmm. of scale that sets in. But the way I look at it is, it's kind of like, I've called it the the epitaph, so to speak. The dash, you remember the poem, The Dash? Mm -hmm. yes. It comes to Legion, yes. you're born, you live, you die. The dash is how you lived. 
in the world of lead generation, the dash is how you nurture. Mm -hmm. You get a lead and how you nurture, how, like most of the time they're surfing on Google, they're clicking links, they're unbranded websites. There's absolutely zero brand recognition at all. Mm -hmm. And so every call, every video, every outreach, your objective is the clock just started ticking and I have to make them want to work with me because here's what I'm up against. Mm -hmm. I know that over 60% of all sellers are going to work with an agent they already know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. Repeat referral business is the number one source of listings, just because I have leads doesn't give me anything. Bingo. I've got to have the ultimate nurture plan that makes them think it's not about the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about right now, the agent to help me get the house. It's a fantastic point. I think like marketers, like we all are, we think in frameworks, at least I do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the framework that I think in, when you talk about the principles of marketing, and this applies specifically to sellers, specifically to listings, is the first and the most important rule of marketing. And without it, you, you'll get nothing, is you have to have attention. If you don't get someone's attention, if they don't know 1, who you are, they can't, yep. they, they can't buy whatever it is you have. Attention yep. to action. Right, well, right. before you get to action, you have to build affinity, mm-hmm. right? You have to move them from attention, you have to provide value mm-hmm. where they actually like you. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about this on stage Just, yesterday. There was yeah. an Instagrammer who had 2.6 million followers, her yep. name's Ari, who went to basically promote her new apparel line. T- she went to sell t-shirts to her 2.6 million followers, which is 2.5 like mm-hmm. more million mm-hmm. than you. Yep. And you got, a, you know, thousands of agents here or whatever the number is. <laughs> Help me out, Courtney. Right? He just he he first he brags me up and then he just crushes well, my soul. Well, I, I'm gonna turn the corner. Give me a second. Let me finish a thought. I'm just messing. She's got she's You're got two point six million sizer. followers, <laughs> and she could only sell thirty six t shirts. She's got attention. She doesn't they're, have affinity. They're, yeah, they're they're not there to buy t shirts from her. They're there to be entertained by her. But then if you, you were to rock, sell t shirts, you'd sell a hell of a lot more than thirty six. Okay, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so my point is, you got attention. Mm-hmm. You've got infinity, mm-hmm. and then and then you can call them to action. Then you right. get into action. Yeah. You think What's another that? word for affinity? Because I think about it, it's like maybe just in simplistic terms, we have a relationship now. Community. So we, we have, you're building some, a community. Yeah, tribe, relationship, camaraderie. We've connected. So I love the word affinity. Sure, I love it. I'm just just trying to keep it in like the simplest terms. Like you now have established trust. Yeah. Well, some not, maybe like, not as much trust as you want, but you've mm-hmm. established trust. So it's. I'm aware of a lot of brands and businesses. Mm-hmm. I have no consideration for them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Or I don't have any sense of connection with them. So those are simpler words. Right. But the right. idea right. is just being seen is nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's let's go back to the list. Yeah. So what were the what were the most viral pieces of content or best nurturing the way you described this a minute ago. Sure. Um, CNBC put an article out recently that the consumers were searching uh, the search term when, not if, when will the real estate market crash yes. was up 2,400%. Yep. So as soon as we heard that stat, we created an article called, is the Las Vegas real estate market crashing? Mm-hmm. And that's it. And then the answer of course is, no, it's not. Yeah, crashing. fill in the blank on any city doesn't yeah, make a difference. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so yep. one other, I'll give you one more example of this. No, but but if CNBC went with when, why would you tell me the the hypothesis behind is. not just yeah. saying you know is versus when is the Las Vegas real estate market crashing? Yeah. Uh, so the 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 thought process behind it is we have to control the narrative. Mm-hmm. If we if we say when is the market crashing, then we turn. You the imply board. it is. We, yeah. we, you're implying that it is, and so I think the thing that we have lost in this industry is we've lost control of the narrative. For real, sure. estate, real estate agents, this industry, we have completely lost control mm-hmm. of the narrative. And yep. if you follow anything that Keeping Current Matters puts saying, out, God bless Steve Harney, right? right? Like he's control out. Control the narrative. He, he, you've got to control the narrative, and yep. so for us, we we aren't trying to simply go viral. We're tr- we're trying to actually control the narrative as yes. part of that process. Yes. Yes, beautiful. So give us another one. All right, uh, eight pros and cons of living in the triangle. If you live in a relocation area, yeah. you know the first step yeah. in this process is yeah. actually, you know, hey, what's the best area to live yeah. in within this market? Yeah. Again, where these to, are where to buy in Dallas, where to buy in Austin, where to buy in Houston. Mm-hmm. You know, all that, all, all uh, of that. Yeah. But 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 okay. So as we're going through this, ha- have you created any content on that? Do you know? Have you gone to, was it Atlas, the Atlas article, the Atlas moving the tribe, 48 years of mm-hmm. where people are moving from? And Atlas you know, or United, I don't yeah. remember which one. Yeah. One of those two, or we used to be able to go to- Census Bureau uh, does it too. Yeah, howmoneywalks.gov, you know, and it yeah. would tell us people from you know Cook County, Illinois, are moving to this location, this location, and like, to be able to create content and say, why are people from Cook County, Illinois, yeah. mostly moving to Los Angeles, specifically Pasadena, find out more right. here. Yeah. And like go super narrow and mm-hmm. don't care that there's only 47 views yeah. know that the 47 views are sitting somewhere in Chicago right now going get me out yeah no offense Chicago just giving that well, as an but, example but back, back to your point about synthesizing 
it seems like what's happening here is we take current events that are impacting what consumers are thinking about, yeah. sellers in particular, and we give them a synthesized expert perspective. Sure. Yeah. Right that way. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. This is for the question I know you're thinking about asking. Go ahead. I didn't have one. <laughs> All right, keep going. Keep going. Well, let's feel like really left let's out. <laughs> there's, there, I want, I want to build on this idea. Wow. There you go. Give her. Because um, most people who are watching right now, we know they're not going to create content. They're not going to write an article or blog. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll use Chat GPT to do so. Right. But I would. I would. Yeah. And they're, so they're looking for maybe a little bit lower hanging fruit. Get and, it to us. And this. And so this is an example. We're kind of building on this idea and this whole sort of shows about which is how to get listings. One of the things we've been testing is this idea of value based voicemails. Mm -hmm. And it's been an incredibly effective strategy for us in a really small sample size. So I'll give a disclaimer because we're experimenting. Yeah. But the basic idea is when you sell a house, right? When you sell a house, obviously the opportunity to do a just sold campaign is right there for you. Mm -hmm. And we all understand the, the circle prospecting. But before you do any of that, what you should do is you should go to your database and say, I'm about to call people around this particular listing to see if anyone else is thinking about selling their property. If I come across any deals, would you like me to let you know? It's a good move. And so you, we're, we're basically, we're going to go to work. Mm -hmm. We might as well mm -hmm. get something from it, even if exactly. we get nothing from it. Exactly. Right? You with me on this? Like, yep. And so what we want to do with our databases, show and demonstrate the fact that we're in the market, we're mm -hmm. selling houses, we're mm -hmm. talking to homeowners. Mm -hmm. And so number one, you're going to pick up, of course, buyers. I know it's not about buyers, but you get some buyers, right, to help feed the team. But then you'll also find that buy sell side from people saying, yeah, I would love to live in that neighborhood. I haven't sold because I got, I, I you know, I want to live in that neighborhood specifically. And now you're starting a conversation. Now, when you pick up the phone and call the individuals, what we've done at Curator is we, we took a, one of our clients recently, Connie Carlson, and uh, she's in Atlanta, Georgia. She has a fantastic home she sold in four days, $15,000 above the list price. Yep. And so we said, all right, we're going to go into PropStream, and we love PropStream, fantastic tool. Mm -hmm. We're going to build a list around that, that home. Yep. We're going to enrich it with something called Skip Tracing, which will add the phone yep. number, add the yep. email sure. address. We're going to load it into our call center software, and we're going to call these people. Now, the list was... 37 people. We're not talking about a list of hundreds, 500, yeah. And we just say, hey, and the script was, <clears throat> it goes like this. We're like, hey, we just wanted to give you an update. We recently sold 123 Main Street. The reason that we're calling you, right, this is important when we're leaving mm -hmm. a voicemail, mm -hmm. is because when you when a home sells near your home, it's going to impact your value. So even if you got no plans on selling your home, we'd love to give you a free home value update. Give us a call back at blank, 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 right? That that campaign, move. right? We called 37 people. Half the numbers are shit, right? We couldn't get a hold of them. We left 14 voicemails. No one picked up the phone, Tom. Mm -hmm. One person called us back. She said, yeah, I want to sell my house in six months. It's worth $900,000. Text our client. She goes, oh, yeah, my daughter went to school with her. I know who she is. Like, okay. That's so a targeted. 37, oh. 37 calls. Who <laughs> smashed the cookie? What that's, happens that's, then? That was a mic drop moment on the <laughs> cookie. <laughs> that was a thumbnail. That was podcast over. <laughs> that's the thumbnail. Oh, and he took hey, the you other cookie. Just, you this is more fair. We got to split this thing up. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're just listening on audio. <laughs> you have to go to YouTube. It's all right. <clears throat> By the way, just, um, just to send this to someone at your company mm. that does marketing. Send it to the chief marketing officer, yeah. send it to the head of marketing, send it to you know Sarah, who's that brilliant person who is just getting inundated with, can yeah. you do my just listen cards? Mm -hmm. And just send it to these people and just say, I think if you listen to this, you could really help the organization because I know they could. Because these right? are just scale plays. The, a 1,000%. Oh, and, yeah. and for the person that's listening right now who has the the, the big appetite, the, you know, the yeah. big thinking, mm -hmm. they're probably taking, I mean, I, I was like, hey, could you get my notepad? I need to start well, taking notes. And I was like, wait a minute, I can just watch this over and over again before we publish it. Um, I hope you're taking notes. What I else? was going to say, I love the home valuation offer because mm -hmm. we've used the script before whenever we sell homes in an area, it affects yeah. your value yeah. or your equity. Right. right. But then it's such a logical, would you like to get an updated home valuation? Mm -hmm. It's just right. such a logical When a home offer. sells, it impacts your value you. changes. And, right? and that one, I believe, can be done with or without scale. Mm -hmm. That's like that can be a roll up your sleeves, right. do the sweat equity, yeah. and do the work. That's and a good move. And if you're afraid to make the phone calls, go knock on their doors. Go do right. it like you know yeah. Sunday afternoon from yeah. four to six, and just say, "Hey, I'm just I'm just reaching out with some good news. We just mm -hmm. sold the house down exactly. the street. Mm -hmm. Here here's the just sold price. Like hand them the flyer with the sold price. Yeah, and say we just wanted to let you know that you know with this happening, home prices are going up. Yeah. There's just a tiny little community. We want to just let you know if you'd like yeah. evaluation on your property because it's probably different from that property. Mm -hmm. Like that face to face interaction on a Sunday afternoon. It's beautiful. Where were we when we heard um, 
it may have been Schwartz who said, Sundays between like six and eight are now the highest search time for people looking for properties. Mm. Yes. And then weren't were we all like, maybe we can make a phone call. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's what we said. Maybe, maybe, just, maybe yeah. Yeah. right. Sending emails, yeah. shooting content, sure. you know, like, like everything around talk about the highest peak the times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, so we talked about your number one. What was number two? Uh, was it was it geo farming demo she farming? Said expireds at one point. Oh, expired. Yeah, it's actually expired. Let's talk right expired. Yeah. How many expired listings showed up in the Greater Massachusetts marketplace that you serve on December thirty first? January one, seven thousand. Seven thousand wow. extremely high intent hand raisers. Mm -hmm. Yep. What'd you guys do with them? We started breaking them down and we're just dialing through. And yeah. it, 7,000 is a it's lot a big to get number. through. Yeah, big number. Um, so we were able to filter down. And it's in the month of January, we've already signed four mm -hmm. listings from yeah. expired. Yeah. Right. Super quick, easy. I think one of them is already under contract. Yeah. Right. Just Boom. takes a slight different strategy. Um, but we've got more that are actively in nurture. Yeah. There's so much money to be found in expired. Yeah. So many people stopped doing them in 2020, 2021. Yeah. There wasn't any. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it, this, go ahead, Jason. No, no, I had a question. I was going to say, do you know the ratio of homes that didn't sell in your marketplace compared to years prior? And, I was, and I'll give you the context on this. I was talking to Coach David Caldwell about it, and he mm -hmm. did the math in his marketplace, and he realized that 30% of homes in greater Portland where he was at mm -hmm. didn't sell. They just don't sell. Yeah. And not only do they not sell, they don't all come back on the market. So there's not only an opportunity for like active hot expires, but there's also the opportunity to go back and see who never came back on the market. Right. And Correct. there's the opportunity to start getting that word out if you're positioning for listings that 30% of homes don't sell, mm -hmm. who you work with matters and yeah. those kinds of language patterns. Do you remember, did you ever see the Josh Rubin, we put together a nine, nine postcard campaign that started like, 30 to 40 days after the home had expired. Mm. And then we just once a week for nine weeks, we would just, we would just let them know, Hey, you know, did you know that only two thirds of the homes in Portland ever actually sell when they right. hit the market? We specialize in helping the one third that didn't sell. Mm -hmm. exactly. package. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's not the first postcard, but it's sure. just, and it was just one after another, just sent on autopilot nine yeah. times. Then you start making phone calls and it's, what we know in the expired game doing this for 34 years is everybody goes crazy for the first like 24, 36 hours. Mm. And then it just goes like this because mm. in a typical real estate market, which yeah. we're in now, yeah. every day there's new expireds yep. and new yeah. opportunities and most people are inconsistent. So it's vi it's it's just like the slide we showed yesterday. 8% yeah. mm -hmm. close in the first 30 days, 27% close in month two through three, mm -hmm. and then everybody stops and all the real money is in what you do, playing the long-term nurture game. Yeah. So so what have we found? What What's the new equivalent of that? What's the new equivalent of the longer-term nurture for expireds? For expireds, this is your world. I have some ideas unrelated to expires, we haven't gotten into that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think it's, it's gonna be constant communication. I yeah. think that it's- What I does that mean? Like I, like I, you know, constant communication. It's- Give us an example. It's just constant phone calls. It's updating, I don't, which one of you said it, that the media is creating this narrative. Yeah. Our yes. biggest job is to undo the narrative, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like right. that's the singular focus that we have. Like how many people listening to this have heard the market is crashing. It's the worst time to sell. Right. Mm -hmm. like, right. Interest rates are crazy. There's no more buyers left yeah. in the market, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and our job is to actually just keep mm -hmm. undoing that, mm -hmm. especially with expires. They've been burned, mm -hmm. right? They tried to sell most of these before the market got mm -hmm. all wacky mm -hmm. and they don't understand that it's actually not wacky. Yeah. They've just been the wrong agent with the wrong strategy. Right. And our job is to prove through consistency mm -hmm. that we're yeah. gonna be different. That's have a refreshing guys, point of view. Have you guys ever listed your home and had it expire? I have. No. It I'm was not. awesome. How many? I mean, it's a property we 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 were flirting with the market and the listing agent is like a really dear friend knew we were flirting with the market, but it was the same thing. But I had another one that was in 2008 mm -hmm. that I bought like this shitty condo, right? Because a friend of mine was doing condo conversions and I was like, sure. Okay. I'll throw a little money at it. Like whatever. And I knew that the market was already crashed. Sure. I thought in 2008, but by the time it was 2010, no. it was worth all <laughs> yeah. of my equity was gone yeah. and then some. And I remember like, just somebody just put that thing on the market. Like, <clears throat> I don't even care what it's worth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, it was interesting. My high end one, no one called. Now they may have gone like this into the MLS said, Oh, that's fucking Tom Ferry. Like I'm not calling that guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry if I cursed on my, I guess I don't have to apologize for cursing on my podcast. Um, but the other one was 
I got hit nonstop because it was just in an LLC name. There was okay. no association yeah. in my name, right? So that one just got like, they tracked it down, they figured it out and just, yeah. you know, like oh, yeah. it was it was pretty interesting. But when you think about like your home expiring, you know, if I actually wanted to sell that house and I was really like, we were moving, mm -hmm. that would be a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. How do we have more empathy for the person, even if they were like me that was just flirting with the market? Mm. How do we have more empathy for the person that really got burned? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the biggest play, right? Phil Jones says uh, content without context is noise. So you mm -hmm. see context and the best way to do that is asking the right questions. Right. Mm -hmm. Trying to learn what were they looking to do? What do they want yeah. to accomplish? What yeah. stopped them? Yeah. And I think what you said, like you started by saying, we call them constantly. And I think a lot of people might hear that through the lens of, oh, hard, hard. But then you start right. talking about what you're actually right. doing. You're helping to try to unpack the narrative right. and help them understand what's really yeah. happening. And it's all being done through the lens of how can we add value to you? Right. Service over sales. Yeah. It's the right. mantra that we live by. Right. If we provide service, yeah. deliver value, the sale yeah. will come. Right. One of the most important lessons that Phil taught me when we co-wrote that book, exactly what to say for real estate agents this concept of show show me that you know me. Show me that you know me. And, and as a marketer, mm -hmm. there was a big unlock for me at that time. Mm -hmm. And the, the unlock is, okay, if you're going to market to show empathy, you have to join the conversation that's happening in their head. Mm -hmm. And so as an example, talking about expireds, we had this campaign that we ran, generated a $4.4 million listing. Actually, Peggy Lynn Spiker, who's at this yeah, conference, yeah, shout out to Peggy yeah. Lynn. Uh, we work with her, a curator. Uh, we we use this angle that you could use for expired, you could use it for people who are doing just, res just regular resale. And I'm just gonna read this for the audience because I think it actually taps into what everyone's talking about. It says, there are 2,000 realtors in Maui, but only a few that are brave enough to tell you the truth. So right out of the gates, we're like trying to capture their attention. This yes. is not about the market, we're trying uh -huh. to actually use some storytelling. The real estate gold rush is over, but this might surprise you. Just last month, 146 people bought a home on Maui. And so I'll just stop there. What we're, if you're gonna market to an expired, what I would say, if I were to translate that for an expired, I would, might say something like, hey, we know the experience that you just went through is about as bad as it gets with selling your house. But hold on a minute. There, there, there actually, is a market. There actually right, <clears throat> is hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan, right? Something along that, like, I agree. Build on that, right? right? Get in their minds. So acknowledge you, what they went through. Right. If you don't right. acknowledge it, they're going to say, this person has no idea. And yeah, that's they're just exactly. using me. They're, they're just using me. Exactly. It's, it's so interesting. I think we all need to be thinking about it. I'm going to go back to We're all saying the same thing. Sure. It's, it's know your customer, know their pain points. And then can you be courageous enough mm -hmm. to say, Jimmy, I'm sorry it didn't sell. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I didn't bring you a buyer. I'm just letting you know that in the last four, you know, whatever, like yeah. just like, I, I, that's not the script. Sure. But but that's the tone. Mm -hmm. The tone isn't, hey, I'm sure you figured out that you're, yes, you're the 47th person that's called me this morning yeah. and I'm not even sure why I answered at this point. Like, yeah. it's also not sounding like everybody else. Mm -hmm. It could be the OFQ. Yeah. It could be the, hey, because you put your home on the market mm -hmm. in July right. of last year, yeah. you know, fact, 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 fact. Yeah rate increased, mm -hmm. market, you know, market, you know, war in Russia. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to tell you, mm -hmm. right? I'm just letting you know, if you're interested, there's another way. Or, yeah. and, that, and that's even horrible. We're, yeah. just, we're just role playing. This is by the way, how you figure shit out. You just throw yeah, it and throw it and then yeah. say, what do you think? And how do we make it better? And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? hundred percent. Yeah. I think one of the keys that we're finding and it's I feel always- like, I have, like a, this actually, is a, no, t both of mine go away for how bad that role play is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the keys is not to talk about the other agent. And yeah. I think oh, that that's a mistake sure. that everybody makes. Sure. Because it's not about the other agent. No, was bad, no. Yeah. Right? Did Apple ever mention Samsung? <clears throat> right. Right? It's like, you just, no. you, if you go, you go down that road, it only, only leads one path. Correct. Yeah. But it's super easy when you're talking about, we know your experience yeah. was bad. We know it didn't work yeah. out. Sure. To say, right. because you didn't have the best pictures and because yeah. your agent didn't yeah. do, yeah. right? I so, did. I just, just did an analysis of like five things that, that you might be interested in, you know, if you decide to put your home on the market next time, just please make sure your agent does these five things. Right, mm -hmm. right? I'll send you, just give me an email, I'll send you the list. Yeah, yep. yeah, and let's and let's keep building on this idea of like talking to the consumers like they're not morons, mm -hmm. like they're actual human beings, Bingo. right? Right, yep. and this is, yep. it's, a, it's an old Dave Og a David Ogilvy quote, mm -hmm. right? Yep. The, con the rule number one in advertising, the consumer is not a moron. And if you're watching, <sighs> the best book on advertising, I think it's required reading is on advertising, advertising. right? Yep. It's been yep. around forever. I think I have a signed copy at my office. Oh, like that's, somebody, like that's a copy, it's not signed to Tom. It was, you know, it's like signed hey, to somebody that, else. That's still, that still like, counts. Take it. 
<laughs> take it. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the things that we all know is that the term Zillow is search more than the term real estate. And so mm-hmm. consumers, when you own a house, you're checking your Zestimate, you're checking your Redfin estimate, whatever that is. One of the things that we've done from a nurture perspective and an engagement perspective with seller leads and or people in our sphere of influence is we use the Zestimate to our benefit. And so I'll give the audience here kind of a quick mm-hmm. script on this. The subject line would say, your Zestimate is dot, dot, dot. Hi, Tom. I was on Zillow earlier today looking at a few properties in your neighborhood, and I thought you ch- I thought I'd check out your Zestimate. The estimate for your home's value is $2,700,000. Mm-hmm. And we actually include a screenshot, screenshot of, of the Zestimate, right? 100%. I have my opinion, but I'd love to hear yours. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And all we're doing at this point, and we use this like yep. it's, it's a fantastic script just to start a conversation, right. just to engage them, just to actually be in their sort of orbit as a potential. How, how good is this it's really good. for every person you sold a house to 2019, 2020, mm-hmm. 2021? Mm-hmm. Hey, I was thinking about you today. Yeah. And just for fun, I went on Zillow and mm-hmm. I looked at what this estimate said. Mm-hmm. I have my opinion on the price. What do you think? Bam. That, mm-hmm. Like that's the that's the fastest CMA a day mm-hmm. you could do on the And planet. I think you could do it as a text that's a, too. Okay, yeah. That is almost. <laughs> there it is. All right. Right. We split <laughs> the Crown jewel. Really lost the cookie. <laughs> so you don't really notice no going back to. <laughs> um, so I love the foreplay.ca. I'm going to play around that today. But I'm also thinking about Quora. And mm-hmm. I was thinking about if I went to Quora or another sort of, you know, way Wiki. to mine what's yeah. going on in the minds of consumers Reddit, um, or, or you know, um, what's what's the other one we were playing around with? Um, it's the consumer site that gives you the word tree of every possible question that they're asking. Oh, uh, uh, answer the public. Answer the public, Fantastic right? One, so yeah. answer the public, which I'd love or Quora. Yeah. And I'd be searching for why my home didn't sell mm-hmm. or bad experiences with real estate agents. Mm-hmm. You could also use like BuzzSumo and start mining what's going on in social media realm, realms. Love it. And, and, did every, could, did, tell Somebody tell the, cons, the person listening right now why we ought to look at those three sites and why we want to look at those things. Because content without context is noise. Mm-hmm. Quote speak, Phil Jones. Speak directly yeah. to what they're saying. What's yeah. in the mind of consumers, not- You have to understand. I'm a really good real estate agent. I can sell your home and the last agent was a knucklehead. Yeah, like you have to understand what am I responding to? What is the What is the- I've often told my clients that an objection is an objective. What's mm-hmm. the real objective in terms of what they're yeah. looking for? And yeah. to get that, you have to understand what they went up against, what the problems are, what they're trying to solve for. Yeah. And to get that, you have to ask questions to learn what they care about. Conducting research on a macro level on sites like what you just mentioned makes a world of sense because A, it gives you context. B, it's going to give you ideas. Mm-hmm. The other thing we're not talking about with expireds is I think most of us look at expireds, for instance, as, oh, I'm going to cold call them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to door knock them. Yeah. But the marketing applications, like we have a lot of our clients in the ecosystem who make mm-hmm. a lot of video. Yeah. Right. And they're sharing videos where they're saying, you know, I went on an appointment last <clears throat> week yeah. with somebody whose home was on the market. It didn't sell. And here are the immediate three things that stood out about what's stopping homes from selling right now. It was a right. piece of content that was for anybody to watch. Yeah. But what they're seeing is all their friends who know of their friend who's on the market and they're suffering and their home's not selling and they're not even expired yet, but yeah. they're mm-hmm. about to be. Yeah. They're sharing those videos and this person's already getting the, oh, they get me. Yeah. They, they understand yeah. me. Do you think you guys ever see or any of you see the Lisa Doyle expired listing video? I think I've seen it, so, but it's so, fuzzy in my mind. 12 years ago ish, right? Like I said, okay, guys, we're like, we're on, we're on a conference call. Yeah. You get the, yeah. the timing here. All right, everybody, here's the challenge. I want you to create one video that you believe could get you 10, 15, 20 transactions in the next 12 months. Whoever has the best video go. Mm-hmm. So I, so again, the Lisa video is Lisa with no microphone, <clears throat> probably a flip video camera, mm-hmm. more than likely, more than likely. And it's her. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Lisa Doyle with J. Rockcliffe Realty, standing in front of like 648 Banana Street. And she's like, this home was recently on the market for six months. They had no offers. The home actually expired. Greg and I listed it and we sold it for 99% of asking price and mm-hmm. we did it in 14 days. And literally, remember, th- remember the old mm-hmm. editing fade to the next one? <laughs> yeah. And they fade to the next one. Yeah. Hi, it's Lisa again. This yeah. is one, two, four, you know, Banana Street. Yeah. This one was on the market with three different agents for more than a year and a half. Greg and I relisted the home. We repackaged it, we repositioned it. Yeah. She had seven of these in a row. Yeah. So she was like, well, I'm just going to put them on DVDs and mail them to people. I'm like, <laughs> well, that actually could work. Yes. Again, think of the time. But she ended up emailing that as a YouTube link yeah. once she made a connection. 
Mm -hmm. right? And that was just her way of like, hey, take a look at all these other things. And here's just an example of what we do. Yeah. And the person just went like this, seven times in a row, this woman knows how to repackage, reposition. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Lisa Doyle. And it was so not polished, not mm -hmm. professional, not mm -hmm. perfect. It was perfect for the time. It was user-generated right. content before user-generated content. And it was, it's so, so what's the new version of that? When we think about what's on the minds of consumers, what are you thinking about? Well, the first thing that comes to mind to, to your point is that we always have to take away our perception of right. what's on the minds right. of the consumer, mm -hmm. right? And that's the first thing that, mm -hmm. with why the research, right? Because mm -hmm. as agents, even myself, right? Mm -hmm. I get into this mindset of, I think that this is what their pain point is mm -hmm. gonna be or why they're frustrated and making the content yeah. under our, our lens is dangerous. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so where to go with that? It's a lot to think about. I'm yeah. not quite sure, but I, there's a strategy and a plan that can be put together. It's. Can I speak to every new agent on the planet right now? Absolutely. So the scal, uh, Liz Novello, we're texting yeah. back and forth and she says, okay, my brother says I should be doing a lot of content. I'm like, you should. I said, do you wanna get really good really fast? She goes, yeah. And I said, I want you to call every expired listing in your market and I want you just to survey them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, tell me why. And I said, because if you understand the pain points of people that try to put their home in the market that mm -hmm. didn't sell, yeah. the next time your friend says, how's the market or how's it going? You could say, you know, it's interesting. I just called 197 people mm -hmm. that tried to put their home in the market in the last 12 months and it didn't work out. And what I identified was there was five reasons that the home didn't sell. Mm -hmm. and you just shut up. Mm -hmm. What's everybody gonna say? Well, what were they? Mm -hmm. Right. And I've given that advice to so many new agents and, and again, it's instead of trying to get a listing, which yeah. is what most real estate companies will, if, they, if they're gonna lean towards expires, they're gonna say, call the expires. Yeah. So every new agent, every new cohort is just beating sure. unmersively these poor homeowners. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. I said, take a different approach and actually have a thoughtful like, hi, I'm calling. I just wanna understand, yeah. Yeah. what do you believe are the reasons why your home didn't sell? Yeah. What was your original intention around hiring the agent? Mm -hmm. Knowing, me, would you have done anything differently? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, and then just thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, let me give you an example of this, Tom, because I think it's just a, a, a fantastic point. This idea of understanding consumer psychology. So we mentioned PropStream earlier. PropStream is a fantastic tool to build lists. I called up their customer service department because I'm kind of new to farming. I'm making the transition mm -hmm. from yep. being yep. digital going to farming. Yep. I talked to the customer service rep. I said, hey, listen, you work with hundreds of people. Tell me the secret sauce. What oh, should so smart. What should so I know, smart. right? Yes. And so he, he, starts breaking, he starts breaking down for me. I'm just gonna start holding this thing. Yep. He starts breaking down for me. He says, this is what you should do, Jimmy. He goes, go into PropStream, filter by people who've owned a house for five to seven years, right? Owner occupied, you know, maybe uh, property value, whatever you target, you know, then go into the mortgage info. And then before you do anything, just change the rate, the minimum rate being 4%. Right. And it took me like much longer than it should to realize what he was doing. Because think about it. If someone has a 4% interest rate right now, who's owned the home for five years, 25 million people refinance in the last two years. What does this tell us about the consumer psychology? Why wouldn't you refinance? Right. If you got equity, mm -hmm. you've owned the home for a long time, mm -hmm. I'm not worth the hassle, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna pay, I'm not gonna pay the fees, the cost. I'm gonna sell anyway. So I'm what's the, um, what's the point? What's the point, right? right? right. So they have to have a mortgage, mm -hmm. but if the rate's at 4%, you can apply to an adjustable rate mortgage, the same thing. So we talk about this idea of targeting, like you gotta marry the message with the audience. 100%. And so if you're doing expired, you know, it's sympathy. If you're targeting people who have a 4% interest rate, you know, like, why didn't they refinance? Let me lean into that, at least at the very minimum, get my message in front of them because they're just likely gonna be someone who's actually gonna be selling their home soon. You, there was a postcard that went along with that. Yeah, well, we did a couple postcards on that campaign. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that we loved is we love the Name Your Price campaign. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm showing that today, by the way. Yeah. It's so good. So Any more update? Tell them what it is and you got to give me an update because okay. you text me the, you know, two listing opportunities at $4.2 million just from this card. Yeah, we, we, we're we already tracking over $10 million in listing opportunities from like less than 10,000 cents, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that's five, 76 cents to send, give or yep. take, right? Yep. Um, and what, but there's a, there's a pro tip here, which is when mm -hmm. you create any type of direct response campaign, before you spend thousands of dollars on your advertising campaign, before you even shoot a video and have your videographer, you know, cut it up for you, the first thing you should do, and all of us are passionate about this, 
is you should test it with an email campaign. Yep. And if you get a great response from that email campaign, you now at least have some level of validation that this is worth my worth my time, mm -hmm. worth my money. So what you can do is you can send the name your price email, subject line, name your price. If I could sell my house for blank, I would sell it this spring, okay? If you get a good response on that in your market, which you likely will, now you can turn that into a direct mail postcard and like double down on your winners. So for me, that's just a like a part of the principle of becoming great marketers, like test and validate and then scale. Correct. Kirk, did you hear that? My best pal over there. <laughs> He's like, let's send that email today to the entire database <laughs> and see what happens. I, but I wouldn't send it to my 100,000 person database no. or my 20,000 like person database yeah. or my 10,000 person database. Mm -hmm. I would be very thoughtful of who would I send this to? Right. Let's try a cohort of 19 to 22, you know, buyers. Let's try a cohort of like, you know, maybe 2014 to 19. Let me, let me push back on that. Tell me. Okay. So I think the idea of segmentation mm -hmm. is a fantastic idea and when possible, you should do it. Mm -hmm. But too many people get caught there. Mm -hmm. They get caught in this world That's of, fair. Like, you That's know, they, fair. Get, they get caught. And so like, what I would say is- I'm just for, I'm thinking about these people. For, that, for the for pros. My friends for that have pros, yeah. 80, 90, 100,000. Totally. You send that out. I had a client that sent out a, voice, a voicemail the script. Yeah, yeah. the right? unsubscribe remember the, the old, remember the old blast voicemail scripts? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, this is a really cool voicemail. I forgot what it exactly was. Yeah. And I'm like, you should take this, you slide out, send yeah. it to like 50 people, watch what happens. Well, she sends it to like 7,000 people. <sighs> and you know, <laughs> for the next 24 hours, yeah, yeah. her phone is ringing, people are calling, you got that hot deal, I wanna buy it, you got that hot, yeah, she's yeah. just like, yeah, called yeah. me, said, she this was like, stupid. I was yeah. like, well, I said, send it to like 50. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's what I, I just wanna just, uh, for, and, so we're on the same page. But, but, but this idea, like I sent a postcard out <clears throat> for our clients, uh, 3,000 people because I'm such a novice in this space, I put the damn postage thing over all the copy. I remember talking about right? this with you. Okay, <laughs> like, like I've been doing this for a long time. It's a scratch and I, I'm like, let's, I'm like let's, let's do this scratch and sniff to get the right price. I'm like, let's do this beautiful vertical postcard. And like the address is, oh my, what? And so my point is, as a marketer, oh. you've got to put yourself in a position where you realize if you're batting 400, you're in the hall of fame. Like, and the lesson that we try to teach our clients and certainly our community is this idea of like, get into the game, get into right. the arena. Like, don't try to get too cute. Now, if you're a pro and you've got this incredible logistical system like you have, like you're the Amazon of agents right now, Lisa, sure, segment all day long, right? But like, make the decision quickly and get the campaign out there. That's one of the things I think a lot of agents right now, especially this group, you guys have high performing agents here. Yes. They just like, it's get, get in the game, like right. let's go. I'm literally thinking we should do a uh, a test on a postcard of how much is your home worth, mm. right? And then have a scratcher. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. And and not put a price in there, just more than you think. Mm -hmm. Call for details. Oh, I like mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just like like there's just a population of people that would be like immediately. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it'd be an expensive postcard, so we want to test it first. But sure. I just think it would but be hey, super fun. fun. When you said it, like you put it over and I was like, oh, scratch it. Oh, yeah. yeah if you can take my horrible there. mistake and turn it into something positive, I'll be happy. But, but yeah. isn't that what this whole <laughs> yeah, thing yes, is? I mean, like it's it. every session. Yes. We're like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What about this? Oh, yeah. All right. So we've been going for more than an hour. Yeah. Um, lots of cookies and you know ideas exchanged here. Uh, let's do closing thoughts because otherwise we're going to do this for like three hours, which yeah. would be fabulous. We should definitely do another one of these mm -hmm. together. This was really valuable. This was a fun one. Yeah. Um, closing thoughts, I think is, I think the biggest thing is understanding the importance of listings and understanding you, to Jimmy's point, you just have to get started, right? right? The longer you think about yeah. it and the longer you take to execute on it, the more opportunity you're going to miss. Yep. And yep. it's a really great opportunity right now, despite what the, the messaging in the media says. Right, right. Uh, closing thoughts. I'll take a coach's perspective. Uh, I think the idea of inputs, what you brought up before is mm -hmm. really critical. I suspect there's a lot of agents who are maybe solo agents or they're not running an enterprise level team who are like, I don't know where to start. There's a lot right. of moving parts here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the strategies, not all were we discussed require an economies of scale effect. But I think if you can get curious about mm -hmm. trying to understand the context of what might be befacing a seller mm -hmm. in your marketplace, that's going to naturally produce ideas of how you can talk and who you talk to and what you talk about. Mm -hmm. So I would just block time daily for what are my inputs? What am I learning? How am I researching and getting context in the marketplace? Yeah. So the good news is this, if you're an agent right now, right, the percentage of consumers have been using real estate agents has been steadily climbing for yes. over two decades. Yep. Now sure. with one exception. I buying. Right, I buying entered into the market and all of a sudden they started eating market share. Mm -hmm. They were estimated to be a $100 billion business. I buying didn't disrupt the real estate agent. 
They disrupted FISBO. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Exactly. Right? That's the good news. Here's the bad news. We're going to say what? Four, four and a half million houses will sell this year, right? If we're optimistic, 4.75 million houses. The last time we had four and a half million houses sell was when? Five, six, 20, I'm going to say 2014 or 2018. It's you're you're close. Years. It's okay. been 2012 was the last yeah, time we had four and a half yeah. million. I can see the KCM slide in my head. Yeah. So yes. And how many agents do you think we had at that point? Exactly. What will be your guess? Go ahead. Uh, in 2012. At about 500,000 less at least. I would say probably 1.2. We're talking, we're talking just U.S. We're talking just U.S. Are we talking active or licenses? Just realtors. Whatever NAR no, reports. That, okay. All right. Well, what? NAR's numbers are okay. wrong. Okay. So let's just use NAR's numbers because that's what they put out there. 999,000 realtors. Yeah. There are 1.6 million realtors right now. There are 60% yeah. more realtors and there are now uh, inventory levels or sales now at 2012. Uh, numbers. We are in the real estate hunger games. Mm -hmm. It is going to be more expensive. It's going to be harder. It's going to take longer to convert customers. There's going to be winners and losers. And half this industry is out of business. They don't even know it. And so my takeaway, my closing thought is like, get in the game. Like, let's get to work. Yeah. So fun fact, 80.9% of all the agents in a typical MLS, call it a 10,000 plus person MLS, mm -hmm do two listings, the active agents, because there's all the yeah. agents that don't sell a house, just mm -hmm. the ones that sell a listing, average two, which is about 45% of the market, mm -hmm. the top 6%, 33%, mm -hmm. tiny little group, mm -hmm. absolutely crushing it. Yeah. So I would say, kind of piggybacking on all this, wherever you find yourself, what's the one thing you're gonna do? Just do that. Just find one thing and do that. Keep it yeah. really, really, really simple. Thank you, 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 and thank you so much for watching this show send this to your marketing person, the chief marketing officer of the company. It'd be a really good idea. See you soon.